This is Sandy McGuire, selected to the California High School Speech Hall of Fame in 1998. And we're sitting in what was her classroom when she was a very successful speech instructor and coach at Miramonte High School. Okay, Sandy, how goes it? Uh, how are you doing these days? Doing great. Okay. Um, we're going to get right to the uh, right to the questions here, and uh, you share with us about your speech career and about your life a little bit. So let's start out at the beginning. Where are you from? I am from Berkeley, California, and I went to Berkeley High School and then uh, progressed to Cal, Berkeley. So I'm very much a local girl. Boy, you didn't go very far, yeah. did you? <laughs> but then I didn't either. So that's that's great. Um, what about your schooling? Okay, you say you went to Berkeley High. Now, I know at one time they did some speech, but I don't know if they did then. Did you participate in speech in high school? Speech had a big impact on my life at Berkeley High. I took public speaking for two years. I gained so much confidence, but at that time, it was not a competitive uh, event. So uh, I was exposed to it and had wonderful, wonderful memories. When I went to Cal, uh, I thought of taking rhetoric, but it was more theory than speech. I would say rhetoric never got you to a speech tournament, no, I don't think. No, and it just, in other words, um, so I didn't really think of speech again until uh, I went back to Berkeley High to do my practice teaching after I graduated from Cal. I was an airline hostess for two years. Oh my! And then came back to get my credential. And when I did my practice teaching, not only did I have a class in history, which was my major, but I had one in public speaking. And I loved it but I never thought it would enter my life professionally. And what happened when after uh, I stayed, I taught for a couple of years, world history, then I stayed home with children, three children, till they were older, and then I wanted to get back into education, and I never, ever thought speech would be part of it. But when I was interviewed at Miramani, Right before school started, they gave me an opportunity to either do world history or be in the English department, and it would be English and a class of public speaking. I thought about it for about 30 seconds <laughs> and decided that I would, because I had also been reading uh, for the district, and I was pretty familiar with the English curriculum, not so with the world history, and it was only three days before school started. So I went with the public speaking, and at that time, only seniors could take the class. There was no competition, and I had a good friend uh, who had taken speech with me at Berkeley High, and she gave me all her notes from high school. I was like one assignment I had. <laughs> And then the way I got into competitive speech, after a couple years, and I still had the one class, um, one of the students wanted to participate in an economic speech contest, and I learned we had to be a member of GGSA. I had no idea what GGSA meant, but there was a teacher, Jean Reeder, from Camp Lindo, a sister school, who was involved in competitive speech. So she told me about it. I actually went out and saw a tournament of, and I said, this is for Miramani. Because I always had loved competition and the idea that it was an intellectual pursuit. I said, I want to bring competition to Miramani. And so that's how it started. Well, that's Fabulous. Uh, during those years, and you were always at Miramonte, you were never at any other well, school? Well, before I had children, I was in the Berkeley school oh, okay. system, but no, I only uh, was at, well, actually I was at, trying to get back in when I wanted to teach again. That was a time they had too many teachers, mm -hmm, yeah. so I um, was still determined it would work out, and I read for the English department. I was at Los Lomas in the special mm -hmm. education department. Um, I had a semester at the Continuation High School, 
So you can imagine it was a dream come true when I had a call that I could have a full-time position at Miramani High School. You earned your stripes. Hey, that's <laughs> great. Um, during your time, once you got everything started, things were growing, um, what kind of things did you do within your league? Uh, what offices might you have held within the league and uh, NFL as well? Well, my primary goal as a coach was to be in the classroom. I really, that for me was always that one-to-one -one with the students. And so I resisted from getting too involved in um, offices, but I was Congress director for our league twice, two different times, and it wasn't just one year. I can't remember before yeah. I became Congress director when they asked me to go uh, on the state um, committee. In other words, I had to think about it. But I did because I was able to be on the Congress committee. And I think at that time that I served everyone in our committee really was committed to Congress. And I think we did a lot to make it a little more professional. A good example was that I think the year before, a presiding officer in the final round was wearing a Dr. Seuss hat. And it wasn't exactly the professionalism that I was already seeing at national. So uh, I really loved my time there, did as much as possible. And of course, Congress has grown. That, oh, very much so. That turned out really to be our strongest event, and I've served as a parliamentarian several times at National. Even after retiring uh, the last two years, I uh, still work with the team, and I was a parliamentarian uh, the last two years, and I love it. I just absolutely being with the young people. What, what was it that got you started with your interest in Congress in the first place? Well, first we had to learn individual events, and I was very proud. Our first year we got five people to state. I was so thrilled. And we hadn't done much Congress, but because it could happen in the classroom, I think debate, you need more, some special coaching, and not all the students might, in other words, they might all leave the program <laughs> if they all had to go directly into debate. But it worked for the classroom perfectly because you could have all the students participate, and then many of them really wanted to become involved that way. And then, um, and I learned so much, in other words, uh, I would, it was like I was a student learning. I sat in on all kinds of uh, events to see what was best for our team, and I did spend a lot of time. Now, I know you were a coach that coached everything, correct? Yes. Well, no, no, no. No. Really, IE and Congress, as far as debate, uh, I had an assistant coach at one okay. point who helped a bit with LD and team, but that was never our main focus. And now, of course, public forum has come in, and that's more like student congress. You like that? Yes, very much. So do I. Very much. <laughs> uh, and then parley, we do a little of that. But Miramani, I think the more people are in public forum when uh, than any yeah. other debate. Okay, with a long list of... Uh individual events then, which you say, the first thing. Which one did you like the best? Both your own desires and coaching it. Whichever one, I, I still feel this. Every event is wonderful, and the speech can be absolutely amazing, or it can be rather weak. So I didn't have a favorite. Okay, good for you. I thought you were going to tell me extemp. But uh, no favorites. Check that off. Okay. Um, thinking back over your years, and you've had so many, uh, not years, but successes, what stands out in your mind of some of the kids that were real successful that you remember the most? Well, I remember lots of them. I've been fortunate enough to be invited to weddings and mm -hmm. um, be in touch with some of the students. and. I wouldn't say there was any special one. I always felt like this year, Miramani lost a really strong senior class. And then you really sort of mourn a little bit because you've seen 
some of these students grow up for four years and it's tough, but then there are always new ones that, in other words, draw you in and you find the same eagerness and excitement from them. So I don't, I wouldn't pick any. What do you find uh, the successes of some of these students are? What are they doing now in life and how may speech have affected some of them? Oh, I think it affects all of them. The ones that, um, you know, talk to me and say it was the most useful class. Many, of course, become lawyers. Um, many go into business. Uh, but even some trying in entertainment, it's uh, a mix. Okay. Uh, have any special memories from state or national tournaments? Just maybe a fun one, maybe a sad one. Anything stand out to you? Of a well, nationals or state? Yes, like um, it was very exciting that we had two brothers in the pr program, and it was a uh, when Georgios Theophanis was a senior. Oh, I remember his, that name. Yes, yes, his brother was a freshman, and with um, no, no, his brother at that point was a sophomore, and Georgios won international extent, and Christos won national. And you can imagine how proud. Are you talking right? state or not? Yes, yeah, state, that's state. state. Okay. And actually, um, Christos even um, was part of that wonderful extent team, and he, I think we've only had two students ever to get to national as freshmen, and he was one of them, and went, and before his career was over, he was. Uh, I believe fourth or fifth in the nation in national extent, and in Congress he was third and second. Younger one went further than the older one. In I'm just talking about the younger one. I mean, the older one also went to national. That's what I thought. I thought they he had didn't. amazing, yeah. amazing careers. Yeah. Well, that would be a memory, uh, absolutely. Uh, along the way, we all have colleagues that uh, pushes encourages, get us going. Who are some of those people in your life? Well, before I mention any specifics, uh, I would just think so many coaches help you because we spend these long hours at tournaments and you don't just talk socially. You ask about their programs, <laughs> you find what, how uh, they might do something different that you would like to implement and they like to pick your brain as well. So over the years, there have been an amazing number. I would mention Dave Mazzara from uh, St. Ignatius because he had these amazing boys and student congress. I was like, he was congress, as I he remember. He was, and he's the one I looked up to, and he was so kind and so nice, and uh, he was my inspiration, you might say, at that point. Uh, our sister league, uh, Gay Brasher, who was the area chair for many years, and she just tried to help you to make it easier with all the paperwork. She was willing to give you scripts. I mean, and every time I see Gay with that same big smile, I just say, wow. She's still out there helping everybody. Yeah, she's just absolutely amazing. And in my own league, I would say Dave Matley, you are going to film him today from uh, Monta Vista, that we worked really well together in Congress. Um, I would say he's having a lot of success in Congress, oh, too. Oh, very much so, and we respect, and it shows because our uh, team members are so close to their team members. That's great. It really is. It's a friendly competition. Sometimes one will go to the prom with <laughs> of their students, or they come here, and it's just really very, very nice. And then, of course, my successor, Kristen Plant. I am like a proud mother because um, Kristen was in my program, and she took the program over, and all that she's doing, uh, even today, I saw how she has used computer so much to help them, uh, was showing them, in other words, how they all would have access to the Congress lectures and the research that the people put up. And I was just saying, I remember the old days of just trying to Xerox material for students. And then she is so good in public relations. And she now has built the program to seven classes so that 
another teacher is teaching uh, two. Now, did you have a full load of speech classes most of the time? Most of the time, I had four classes and one English class. Okay. Um, this asks you to boast a little bit, and I know you're not the type to do that, but um, what do you think were your personal greatest contributions to speech? I think my greatest contributions were to the students, because even though we taught competition, um, probably the majority in your class are not the ones that are going to be winning at state and national. And I always felt if a student was in my program for one year, I wanted them to gain confidence and I wanted them to feel they always could speak when it was important, whether it be later at PTA meetings or uh, in any way. And that they really, because I've read so often in papers that when students are asked in a poll, what was the most useful class you ever had? They would choose public speaking, they would say. Oh, I've seen that so often so too. Yeah. That was number one. And then of course, when you have, the greatest success was to see the growth in students and the students that would stay for four years. And you remember, you know, a boy that was this, you know, very small, little tiny boy, and by the senior, you know, a real man, and the confidence and the success, because the students who worked hard, I always admired, and I always felt no one wins everything, but if you have a goal and you keep trying to improve, something very good will happen to you competitively. And so you share when that happens. A couple times, I mean, I would have tears when you know you got, somebody goes to a difficult district tournament and you know how, what that person has done and they actually qualified a national, I mean, that is for, or to go in and watch them. When I was at national this year, I was able to go in and see all our Congress people speak and you're just saying, wow, wow. You know, yeah, sit back there, wow, they did it, but you had a little bit to do with well, it. Well, I think you give them the opportunity. Right. And you obviously try to coach so that they have, um, you know, they will have more of the skills. So it's a wonderful profession. If you could change it, well, let's put it this way. <laughs> what changes did you first see from the time you began till the time you ended? What changes? in competition and just general speech education? Well, I think the kids are still the same. You still get these kids that no matter what year, the ones that really, you know, uh, somehow get hooked on speech and really want to do it and are, learn to give back, learn to be mentors, to help the young ones, more important than any trophy. In other words, they win and that. But for some of the changes, when I started, they had girls extemporaneous and boys extemporaneous. And my very first year, we qualified a boy and a girl. And of course now, obviously, um, where you might say with the women's movement, speech has definitely shown that, and where you get girls that definitely um, do as well as the boys. I remember when I started Congress, girls would come in little peasant skirts and all, and here were these guys in suits. So just the whole change there, and it was, I don't know the year, it was a long time before any girls won debate at national, and now you just see the girls being very successful. I also see more of a cultural and racial mix than when very I much started. So. And for example, at Miramani, there's several Asian students uh, who've been very successful, Middle Eastern students. Obviously, there are more black students throughout the nation. I remember when Oprah, I read about how Oprah, in other words, competed at national reading in her book. In other words, she was saying that there weren't very many black people yeah. on speech competitively at that time. Okie doke. Um... Looking ahead, what changes would you like to see and what do you think might happen in California speech? California. Um, I find California Association not as friendly as national. 
I think that they you get too many protests over silly tiny bits that national seems to be looking out for the student more. Uh, I think the paperwork that coaches, if I was a starting coach now and all the scripts, that might be, I might be gone immediately because then you're not working with the students, you're worried about did you have one site somewhere and it depends who reads your scripts on whether they get through or not and it's also I think for the people that have to read them. So in that way, I would say the bureaucracy uh, is very different state. Oh, and so much. So much. And I don't like to criticize, but I just found uh, very, very, sitting there one time with how many scripts and just almost wanting to say, I don't know if I can do it. <laughs> Reminds me when we quit taping. I want to. Yeah. I want to elaborate on that. <laughs> Finally, in conclusion, is there anything that says speech to you that we haven't talked about? Something you'd like to mention that we Not haven't. Not really. Covered? What I was going to say is, sort of the end of that. In some ways, there's a lot of positive. For example, the way National has reached out to junior high. You like that? I do, and they even have, I've even seen some of the darling ones uh, when they put on the week, they get to come to National and the pride the parents are showing, and it is really exciting. And in our own district now, uh, the junior high is involved in debate, and so students come in and they're very excited about speech. So that is something that I think is good. I also just love the way National has made it even global, where if you go to National, you can see a debate between you know a people from a foreign country, and just that exposure, the way they brought American Legion in, I think is wonderful, where the students that take first, second, or third are invited to National. I just see an opening for their, and they've added events. Uh, I just. I think speech um, is definitely doing extremely well there. Great. Thank you very much. Sandra McGuire, Miramonte High School, retired. <laughs>